Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday update. And we're going to start with a picture of the day. This is kind of a different one. Uh, our cameras and coffee group does a different theme every month. And this last month, the theme was transitions. And so all the pictures uh, had some idea of transitions in it. And this photo was sent by Kurt Biddinger. And it is the, a photo that shows different phases of a building being completed. And this is actually the Mosaic Cultural Center that is being constructed in uh, Antalya, Turkey. And if you know, Kurt and Jerry have lived in that part of the world, uh, ran a Christian retreat center there. And uh, this, this place here, this Mosaic Cultural Center, is a Christian outreach uh, in that city. Uh, it has been there, I believe, since 1999, and it's near a university there. There are about 30,000 students uh, on the campus, and they say this place has climbing walls, a coffee shop, shared workspace, English conversation, oral history, and so it's uh, a work of four different congregations coming together that have built this and are using it as uh, just a great way to connect with uh, students there in Turkey. So, Kurt, thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, this Sunday, we'll be continuing our series that I've titled Unexpected, When God Changes Our Plans. Uh, actually, I won't be continuing it this week. Um, our new pastor of adult ministries, Lance Lewis, is going to be preaching this week. And he is going to be preaching on one of my favorite characters in the New Testament. Um, I won't steal his thunder, but I think you're going to enjoy it. We'll also be commissioning Lance, uh, his wife Becky, son Will, uh, and their daughter Hannah. Uh, she doesn't live at home anymore. She's an adult, but she's going to be here this weekend as well. And so they'll be with us Sunday morning. We'll be commissioning him, and uh, then Lance will be preaching uh, on the next in our Unexpected series. And then right after the service, we are going to have a welcome reception for Lance uh, and Becky and Will and Hannah. And uh, so there's going to be pie there. They'll be right in the main auditorium. So we just finish church and we'll go directly into having some pie together and give you a chance to get to know Lance and his family a little bit better. So hope you can join us either in person at 10 a.m. or online also at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. This weekend, this is coming right up Friday and Saturday. So tomorrow and Saturday, our women's ministry is hosting their retreat, uh, their special event called Master Potter Simple Clay. And this is with Jennifer Taylor. She's a ceramic artist, part of our church. And she does some wonderful stuff uh, with live demonstrations, uh, throwing pottery. Not throwing pottery as in breaking it, but you know what I mean. She has it on the pottery wheel and uh, bringing out just all kinds of really great spiritual insights from that. I think the deadline for registering for this conference was Wednesday, so yesterday. Uh, however, ladies, if you didn't get registered and you meant to and you really want to be there, I'm sure there's some way they could still get you in. Where it may be difficult is they were getting lunches provided and so there may be some issues about food. But if you haven't got registered yet and you really want to be here for this conference, why don't you give the church office a call right away today and let us know, all right? So that's happening this weekend. Then coming up on April 9th at 8.30 in the morning, our men's ministry will have their breakfast. And uh, so why don't you plan, gentlemen, to join them April 9th. That's a Saturday morning at 8.30 in the chapel uh, for their men's breakfast. Easter is just about here. And we've got something special planned for the week of Easter, starting with Palm Sunday and then going on through Easter Sunday. We're calling it Mary's Treasure. We have a guest coming. She's from Port Townsend. Her name is Rebecca Small. Uh, Rebecca is an author. She is uh, a teacher. She's an actress. And she has specialized in telling the stories of women of the Bible. And Rebecca and I got talking here oh, about a year ago about what it would look like if she told the story of Easter through the eyes of a woman. And the woman that she's chosen to tell the story through are the eyes of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so she's going to do a short presentation on Palm Sunday, uh, Mary at the Triumphal Entry. And then we're going to have a Good Friday service, Friday night. That'll be at 7 o'clock in the main auditorium. And she's going to portray Mary at the cross. We know Mary was there because, you remember, one of the things Jesus said at the cross was he committed his mother Mary into the keeping of his disciple John. And then Easter Sunday morning, again, she'll be with us, and this time reflecting on 
what was Mary thinking? What might have been her response to the resurrection of Jesus? And so I think it's going to be just a really special way to celebrate Easter this year. Also, on Easter Sunday, we'll have our sunrise service at Port Williams. That will be at 6.15 in the morning. Uh, Jeff Forberg leads that. So I hope you make plans. Uh, be with us for Palm Sunday, either in person or online. Plan to be with us that Friday night for the Good Friday service. Again, we'll be live streaming that as well at 7 p.m. Sunrise service, Easter Sunday morning, 6.15 at Port Williams, and then our Easter service at 10 a.m., again, both in person and online. And, oh, and by the way, for Easter Sunday, don't forget, if things get full, we have the chapel as overflow space. So that has the service, uh, closed circuit TV, over in the chapel, and that is available. On, it's really, it's available every Sunday at this point. Something to be thinking about coming up, this is still uh, early warning, but April 30th is the date for Beautiful Day. And Beautiful Day is a project that's been going on for, I want to say, five years now. Uh, it is churches uh, in the community. We come together on this day to do various beautification projects around, around town. Uh, we have usually taken on a project at the schools. Uh, Swim Community Church is involved in doing projects. Several other churches are involved as well. And it's just a way for us as the body of Christ in this community to go out and uh, help beautify our community, a way to serve our community. So you'll get more details about that in the upcoming weeks, but you might just mark it on the calendars now for April 30th uh, for a beautiful day. How about a thought for the day? This comes from Matthew chapter 14, and uh, I was reading from a devotional called Streams in the Desert, and that devotional quoted just one line out of the story. The line was, the wind was against them, and it got me looking at the broader context. Uh, here it is. This is Jesus. He has sent his disciples ahead across the Sea of Galilee. They've got caught in a storm, and suddenly Jesus appears. Here's what it says. The boat, by this time, was a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he, that is Jesus, came to them, walking on the sea. And Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. You know, being out here in Dungeness, I think we all know just how unrelenting the wind can be. And if you've ever been out on the water, when you get into that kind of strong wind, that's what kicks up the waves. It can get pretty intimidating. And of course, the Sea of Galilee is notorious for the strong winds that will just suddenly come crashing down on it, which is what had happened to these disciples. They're out there in a small boat. It's actually nighttime as they're going across, and they are suddenly caught in this fierce wind and these heavy seas that are just beating them down. It really, they are preparing to sink is what's about to happen. And then Jesus comes at a time and in a place and in a way that they never would have expected. He comes walking on the water. And, and Peter gets inspired and he wants to take a big step of faith. And, and so he says, Lord, can I come out too? Can I walk on the water? And Jesus says, sure, come on. And, and of course, the story is Peter gets out of the boat and then it says that he sees the wind and the waves and he begins to falter. He gets his eyes off of Jesus, he gets afraid, and starts to sink. And the best thing he did, though, in that moment was he cried out and he said, Lord, save me. He may have taken his eyes off of Jesus for a minute because he was in the storm, but when he realized the trouble he was in, he looked back to Jesus and he said, Lord, I need your help. And uh, I don't know what stuff you may be facing today. Uh, there, I've got friends right now, and maybe some of you watching are among those, that you are in a relentless wind. There are trials coming at you right now that uh, they just won't stop. And when you look around, it can be pretty scary. I've been in those times, 
and, and you think to yourself, there is no good way that this is going to end. And yet, Jesus invites us to trust him. His words to Peter, after he caught him, he said, why did you doubt? Trust me. And, and the good news is, Jesus didn't, he didn't reprimand Peter. He, he did reprimand him. He's like, why did you doubt? But, but he did catch him. You know, Jesus didn't let him sink. He didn't pull his hands back and say, man, if you would have done it better, I would have grabbed you, but uh, you're, you're afraid and I'm going to let you sink. No, Jesus caught him. And I want to encourage you, you may be feeling overwhelmed. You may be coming to Jesus again saying, Lord, help me. And you may be thinking, he's got to be sick and tired of hearing me ask for help after all this. But I just believe that grace means that Jesus is there to catch you. And uh, don't lose hope. Don't, don't give in to the wind and the waves. Uh, keep looking to Jesus. Keep asking him for help. And uh, I believe he will catch you. Let me pray for you. Father, you know the wind and the waves that are in all of our lives. And Lord, you know the people that are watching, listening right now that are in one of those fierce storms. And Father, I pray that you will catch them, that you will hold them in this storm, that you'll give them courage, you'll give their hearts peace, and Lord, I ask that you would quiet the wind, quiet the waves, that you would deliver them from the storm, whatever it may be. But Lord, until then, we ask that you would keep a firm hold on us. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, so whether your day is a day of nice fair weather and, and smooth sailing, or whether you're facing the wind and the waves, um, I trust you know that God is with you. I hope we see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m., either online or in person. And until then, be blessed.